everybody, welcome to Capital Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch, Rob Jarrell, and today we got a special edition of the Technical Toolbox for you, in which we're going to physically break down how Sergey Kovalev can beat Andre Ward in their upcoming uh, pay-per-view matchup on November the 19th. Now, a lot of guys, you know, we've been talking online and watching videos, making our own videos, a lot of people are just saying, oh, well, you know, Kovalev's going to walk right through Ward because he's so powerful, and Ward's not powerful. And I'm like, you know, like he walked through Bernard Hawkins and Isaac Chalimba. You know, those guys, everyone says he fights similar to Ward. He didn't walk through them, but he still won a fight. And you know how he did it? With this bad boy right here. So when people are like, oh, he's just going to do this and that, and he's just going to walk right through it, I say, Houseway, houseway. We don't live in a life of superlatives, so we're gonna break it down for you how Kovalev could take it to Andre Ward. Yes, let's get into it. All right, we're gonna back up because if you watch our other technical toolbox videos, we always tell you that the feet are very important. That's right. Almost more important than the hands. So we're gonna zoom it in just a tad. Actually, now I'm gonna pull it out. There we go. Now, the very first thing, uh, Rob's going to be playing the part of Kovalev, and I'm going to be playing the part of Ward. And the very first thing that Kovalev needs to do to win the fight against Andre Ward is to keep Ward directly in front of him. Now, we know Ward likes to move around. He likes to move laterally in circles around his opponent to create angles for his strikes and to take away the angles for his opponent's strikes. For uh, Kovalev, he has to stop that. In order for him to do that, he has to walk with Ward and keep him on Kovalev's center line. How does he do that? By using his own lateral movement. So if I'm Ward and I decide I want to back up, you see, he steps forward, I come this way, he comes this way. I go this way, he comes this way. So he always has him directly in front of him because if he's over here, that right hand is now taken away. We I mean, you know he has a very good right hand, but the one thing he doesn't want to have to do is bring it across his body and open himself up for a counter from Andre Ward. Right. He does not want to do that because that will frustrate him and make him get a little more anxious later on in the fight and make more mistakes, leading to a loss. So, when Ward is moving around, Kovalev is right in front of him. When he goes this way, Kovalev is right in front of him. So that way, he always has a full target to throw his punches at Ward. And we know Kovalev throws very good straight punches. And like Rob said, if Ward is on either side of him, one of those hands are going to be ineffective. If I'm over here, he can't jab me. And if I'm over here, he can't throw his right hand. So, even though Rob is a lot taller than me, Ward and Kovalev are very close in height. So if Ward is over here and Kovalev reaches, that's out of the way. Ward steps in with a counter of some sort, either here or here, or maybe even here. Either way, those are scoring points for Ward, and Kovalev gets frustrated. And, and Kovalev has to be mindful when moving around the ring to not cross his feet. He has a habit, and it's very infrequent, but it happens every now and again, where he takes his back foot and it goes behind his lead foot. And when you're fighting someone like Andre Ward who notices that, he'll take advantage of it. Because if your feet are crossing, you're not in a good position to punch, and you're also off balance. So if he does that, he's going this way, and he sees that, bang! And it doesn't take much to be knocked either off your spot or knocked down because you're off balance, whether you're hurt or not. Right. So that is point number one. If he keeps Ward in front of him at all times, he always has an alley for his punches, and he can see Ward's punches coming as well. Because if I'm right here, this is all I have. But see, Kovalev has his avenues as well. And we know he can throw that double right, so he will boom, boom. And as long as he keeps him on that line, 
He'll be there all night to be hit. Yes. So the second point is control of the distance. We know Ward can work from the outside using his jab. He comes in using various directions. And he also, once he gets in, a lot of times, he likes to throw like a lead right, or he'll come in with the jab and just get in and then start to work on the inside, right? Now what Kovalev has to do, you saw him do this a lot versus Chalimba and Hopkins. When they came in, he would get their head in a headlock. At this point, you cannot work. So the ref is forced to break it up. That way, the inside game of war becomes ineffective. Now, not only that, not only can he not throw punches, but in that headlock, if he decides that he wants to bring it up, he's cutting off the airway to the neck, which is going to tire out his opponent. Right. And also, it's going to tire them out because they're going to try to get him off of them, so they have to expend extra strength to do so. Now here's where point one and point two come together. Now say I'm Andre Ward. Andre Ward likes to come off of the person's center to his right, their left. Now if he's successful in that and he decides, say, Rob throws a jab and Ward counters and comes in, Kovalev grabs him, but because I'm off to the side, you see how easily I broke that? That's why he has to keep him in front of him. Because in front of him, it looks like this. You throw your jab, I come in, I can't break. And not only he has control here, and he also has his arm locked on the, on the on Ward's left side. So he can't work on that side, which leaves one arm to either free himself or try to work from awkward position. So, let's see that again. If I'm off on an angle and I come in, I'm breaking, and now, boom, I have an angle for my hook. Turn this way. Boom, I can land my hook to the bread basket. And at this position, that's somewhere you definitely do not want that to land. I can come over the top with my right hand, which, once again, Kovalev does not want. Or I can just turn him, and when he turns around, boom, I'm ready to work. So that's why Kovalev must keep him in front of him and control the distance on the uh, inside. So once Ward comes in, he ties him up, he can't work. Referee breaks it up, and they have to reset. And Kovalev is very fast with his straight punches, so he does have a chance to land on the outside. Third point. A lot of times, Kovalev likes to back straight up when an opponent advances. He saw it a lot versus most of his opponents, and we thought it was something that Bernard Hopkins would be able to uh, counter, but he was unable to because Kovalev was able to catch him with counters and also just stop his momentum by stepping far enough back. Sort of like this, and almost like the very first exchange of the fight. Bernard comes in and throws the right hand to the body, but Kovalev just takes another step back, and then Hawkins has to reset. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with Chalimba, he would take two steps back, and they aren't there anymore. With Ward, Ward is going to keep coming. So, Ward, he'll double jab, but he'll keep following him with more punches. You've seen him do that in several fights. So what Kovalev needs to do is utilize the lateral movement on his part. So instead of just taking the two steps back, he has to take two steps back and around, which would look like this. See that? So now I have to chase Kovalev and open myself up to counters like so. I start jabbing, boom, I turn, bang. And it's not even an over, it, he can throw it overhead or he can throw it very straight, boom. And we know he can knock people out or then put them on the ass with that straight right hand. Yes, so he wants to create opportunities for that right hand. And, and watch him, he's gonna also try to control distance when he goes back, boom, right here. Yes, yeah, so when he's coming in, if he feels war is too close, boom, 
And you see that? I have to clear that left hand. Let's turn, turn it around towards the camera. I would have to clear that left hand before I can do anything because that's blinding my field of vision. So I have to block it like that, boom. But that's still getting through even if I blocked it and I'm gonna back up because I don't want the follow up. And we know if it lands right behind the ear on the dome, that can really put someone down. Yes, so those are really the three top things he has to do and he has to do it for the entire fight. He can't fall asleep, he can't get relaxed in there too much. This is going to be a thinking man's fight. And with his power advantage, if he uses these three tools, he can be very effective and win a decision over Andre Ford or catch him with something in those uh, distance scrums and possibly hurt and drop him mm -hmm. and maybe come up with a chance to finish him. That's right. You got anything else you want to add? Uh, no, it looks like you covered everything. All right, let's go ahead and move on in. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a like. If you have not done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because we're also going to be doing a video on how Andre Ward can beat Sergey Kovalev. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, if you want to hit us up on any of our social media platforms, all the links are below. You can hit us up on our email, capitalcombat at gmail.com. If you guys have any questions, we'll put you in the combat mailbag. And stay tuned. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. This is round one, and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire. My demons are in a rage. Keep thinking that it's a game. I kick rhyme, hurricane. I told them I don't play. I'm liquid. Black Street Fighter. Street Fighter.